Puerto Rican Voices is brought to you by the Center for Puerto Rican Studies, with the generous support of the New York City Council and Hunter College of the City University of New York. Welcome to Puerto Rican Voices. My name is Edwin Melendez. I am the director of the Center for Puerto Rican Studies at Hunter College, CUNY. Today we're talking about the aftermath of Hurricane Maria and the diaspora solidarity movement in the United States. At Puerto Rican Voices, we have interviewed Puerto Rican organizations in Connecticut, Philadelphia, and Massachusetts. These organizations provided support to the victims of Hurricane Maria that relocated to their communities. To talk more about uh, this topic, we have with us Anna Valentin Jackson. Anna is a community leader with an extensive background in community outreach, communications, and development. She was very involved in helping the evacuees. Thank you, Anna, for being with us, and welcome to Puerto Rican Voices. Hello, Edwin, thank you for having me. What zones or regions received most people from Puerto Rico in Connecticut after Hurricane Maria? We are in the central area of Connecticut. We are in the Hartford region, and that's where we saw a lot of people coming in, um, in the city of Hartford namely, but we also had a lot of people coming in New Haven, New Britain, uh, Bridgeport, mainly the city, the bigger city uh, areas in the state. At Puerto Rican Voices, we have interviewed several organizations and community leaders from Philadelphia, Connecticut, and Massachusetts. Let's watch this first clip about Enlace de Familia in Holyoke, and we can talk afterwards. Because of the people that came through our doors and the information that we were able to collect, we serviced over 2,500 individuals. And then people started to call and ask, how can I help? ¿Qué necesitas? ¿Cómo te puedo ayudar? ¿Qué la gente necesita? Um, people were even saying, I could come and sit and talk to people and just calm them down and let them know that Massachusetts is here for them. Irma y María me forzaron a tomar una decisión antes de tiempo. Comencé a escuchar en, en los medios de comunicación que el estado de Massachusetts era, existía una comunidad puertorriqueña que estaba dispuesto a recibir a otros puertorriqueños. La primera opción era Enlace de Familia. Enlace de Familia es eh, una organización la cual me honro en, en laboral en este momento. Soy Family Support Specialist. Las funciones son hacer exactamente lo que hicieron conmigo, yo lo voy a hacer con otros puertorriqueños que lleguen, ¿verdad? Conectarlos con los recursos del Estado para que su transición no sea una transición traumática, sea una transición eh, más fácil. So when I actually arrived to Massachusetts, um, I got the chance to talk to Alex Morse, which is the mayor here. Um, he recommended I do some hours at different organizations. I spoke with um, Hoyoke Health Center, and then after Hoyoke Health Center, they, I did some community hours here, and that's when I started as a FEMA specialist here at Enlace de Familia. It was an overwhelming experience overall, just because um, these were my people. These are, and when I, and us as Puerto Rican peoples, a lot of the times we do consider them as our people, and these, this community that um, is going through this rough patch. It was kind of hard to be able to see people from my own city, because a lot of the people from 
Um, Hoyuk, people don't know, they're exactly from where I am from, from Puerto Rico, from Salinas. I do feel that um, the diaspora here in Hoyuk has expanded even more, and our culture is going to be seen whether they people like it or not, to be honest. Um, and we're respectful, and we're willing to be there for them just as much as they're willing to be there for us, and I think we're going to see that in the future. I'm the Director of Planning and Economic Development for the City of Holyoke. I'm from San Juan, Puerto Rico. I was actually born in New York City, but was raised my whole life in, uh, on the island. When Hurricane Maria forms, I start, you know, we start seeing the mobilization again, and people are really afraid of what's going to happen. And I actually was lucky enough to fly out my parents uh, two days before Hurricane Maria. Uh, once Maria hits, of course, and it's a direct hit, and we all, we all know how horrible that was, uh, we start asking ourselves here, and in my professional capacity, what, what's our responsibility going to be like? We, we, we see the lines forming at the airport. Uh, we know how bad things are there. They say it's just a matter of time until people start increasing the migration that we've seen over the past few years, and they're going to go where Puerto Rican population is. We, we set up a protocol on how we would, we would start working with people as they started coming in. And, and the state kind of mimicked some of the things that we were doing that, that seemed reasonable. Um, and that, that, that helped us navigate a very difficult situation for everyone involved in the, in the weeks and months afterwards. That was a key thing, to be able not just immediately after the hurricane, like the next 24 hours, 48 hours, the next week after, but the continuous engagement with rebuilding is key. Coming up next at Puerto Rican Voices. He was able to pull people together. He was also one that did not focus solely on the Puerto Rican experience in New York, but made bridges to what was happening on the island, what was happening internationally. I, I think he got his power from being so rooted in the community. He changed the discourse. He made us talk about ourselves in broader terms. Casi la mitad de los puertorriqueños están en Estados Unidos y no solamente en un lugar, sino en, en varios lugares. Que en la isla mismo han habido procesos de transformación. Quiere decir que la cultura puertorriqueña no es una cosa dada así, sentada, petrificada, es una cosa trans constantemente en transformación con una multiplicidad de formas de expresión que ahora se reencuentran en un evento como este. I'm a Rican defining my own way, my own way, anyway. He was a wordsman. He also taught us a lot about the meaning and the power of words and writing. The living room and kitchen of many desperate souls, Tumbao Street gutted movement. Tato is indeed one of the most important uh, New Yorkian poets, but he's also a major poet. He truly captured the essence of so many people who walk the streets of New York that no one sees and no one listens to and no one knows. Give us your tire, your beating, your triste, your and sing for me. You write your obituary with the days of your life. Tato has written his legacy with the poetry in his life. Don't single me out, touch all our people, touch all our people, and maybe then, and maybe then you can touch me. Welcome back to Puerto Rican Voices. Certainly, organizations like Enlace de Familia in Holyoke have done an enormous contribution to their communities. Based on your experience, how affected was Holyoke compared to other cities or regions in the country? We did see a lot of people come in uh, in Connecticut, but it was not anything compared to Central Florida, the, the area of Orlando. Uh, Florida was really, really uh, uh, impacted by the arrival of upwards of 200,000 Puerto Ricans. Um, I'm getting goosebumps right now because just the, the magnitude of numbers is a lot. Um, but we also saw numbers in uh, Philadelphia, New York, and Massachusetts in the areas that were closer to us. What can you tell us about the issues that affected Puerto Rican evacuees? We saw a lot of 
brokenness in, in terms of mental health. Uh, we saw people who came in without the language to be able to understand the, the processes or the lack of processes thereof. Um, people who were coming in with challenges of not having a place to stay, not having um, a dollar to their name, not ha just leaving Puerto Rico with just a plane ticket in their hand and coming straight to a place where they didn't have anybody or um, they didn't have access to resources. Those were the things that for me, the first three that really um, it impacted me immediately. Can you tell us a little more about the organizations that supported the evacuees? The Connecticut Institute for Community Development, uh, which is the Hartford Puerto Rican Parade Organization, uh, galvanized all of the resources that we had our, our, at our hands, um, namely connections and people who were attached to connections um, to be able to provide those resources. It, it, here in the local area of Hartford, we had CREC, which is the Capital, Re uh, Capital Region Educational Council, CREC, um, who came in initially and did a lot of the lead work to bring together uh, groups and uh, service agencies to help us um, channel the resources out to the families and to the individuals who um, who came to Hartford looking for help and looking for a place to sort of start over again. Without a doubt, the solidarity of community organization was just outstanding. At Puerto Rican Voices, we have also interviewed Asociación de Puerto Ricanos en Marcha in Philadelphia. Let's watch this clip and we can discuss afterwards. My name is Lilda Ruiz and I'm the president and CEO of Asociación Puerto Ricanos en Marcha here in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Asociación Puerto Ricanos en Marcha is a social services and community and economic development agency. We send solar lights, water purifiers, food, and then we had a business owner here that worked for Johnson & Johnson he pretty much closed his business for like two months and he had a warehouse in Puerto Rico. So we would take everything to the warehouse here, volunteers would put it all together, and then we would ship it and there were people over there waiting in Aguadilla and Mayagüez. Then the issue that we started having is the Puerto Ricans started migrating this way. And we're like, okay, we're helping Puerto Rico, but how about this wave of Puerto Ricans coming here? At the end of the day, we said, okay, we got the money for Puerto Rico, we're gonna give it to Puerto Rico. So then we decided to come together and do a collective impact um, coalition so that we can help the evacuees here. So all of us that did for Hurricane Maria going out, we got together and we started fundraising. So we, we have been able to help most of the people that have come. Um, APM by itself has helped over 200 families. We have uh, 103 families that we have found housing for. We just came together and we just worked because we knew these families needed. In Puerto Rico, I had a vending machine business for over 10 years. And after a hurricane, I, I lost almost everything. I couldn't make any money since September because there was no electricity. I have an aunt that lives in Philadelphia. And um, she offered me some help, and uh, I came here. I started living her in the basement for about six months, and uh, we met Nilda, because everybody knows Nilda here in Philadelphia. is a pretty known person from APM. And uh, I applied for a job. I have the job, and I started working with APM. I start as a uh, foster parent, um, recruiter for a few months and and then I, I work myself up and I have a property management uh, position and now I'm working as a property manager. My duties as property manager is um, deal with a lot of tenants. I think there's 212 tenants in our buildings help the people to get into the um, up, get apartments, um, help them to um, help the community and sign leases, um, help fixing the apartments, all that kind of stuff. If I wasn't for APM, wow, I, I, I don't have an answer for that because APM has been a lot to me now. And I like it, I like to help people, I'm helping people, and it's just been a wonderful journey in one year. Yo me llamo Carmen Iliana Ostolaza, y vivo, o sea, vengo de Adjunta Puerto Rico. 
eh, de un día para otro drásticamente mi vida cambió porque yo lo perdí prácticamente todo. Eh, mi empleo era comerciante, tenía mi propio negocio, el cual se vio afectado porque no tenía ni agua ni luz. Me vi obligada a cerrar mi negocio y a quedarme en cero. Por eso vine acá. APM ha sido la agencia, la única agencia que me ha ayudado. Si no hubiera sido por APM, probablemente yo me hubiera regresado para Puerto Rico de nuevo con mi maletita frustrada, ¿verdad? Y sé que ahora estoy recogiendo el fruto y estoy viendo los resultados de la ayuda que ellos me han dado junto con mi esfuerzo, junto con mi fe y perseverancia, ¿verdad? Y pues no me quiero quitar. Coming up next at Puerto Rican Voices. Ser poeta es estar preparado para dar fuego a la humanidad y hacer una nueva en sí misma. Eso es poeta. When I think of Clemente Sotobelli, extraordinary and inspiring. Arrebatarle a la ignorancia todo el poder que tiene. Eso es ser poeta. Un gran poeta. Un gran luchador. El último puertorriqueño. Convertir las sombras en iluminación total. Eso es ser poeta. He was genuinely committed to both the art form and its liberational qualities. Poeta revolucionando la vida. Y después quemarse a sí mismo en su propia sombra. Eso es ser poeta. Y no estar conforme con nada nunca. Eso es ser poeta. The first story that I heard from my grandmother's lips, Teresa Martina, has been my golden key in opening doors for me everywhere. It is just a fundamentally unique experience to read about characters that you can identify with. If you just read what she published, you would only have a fraction of a very skewed view of what she was writing. Thank goodness we have her archives here. Welcome back to Puerto Rican Voices. Asociación Puerto Ricana en Marcha contributed to the adaptation of Puerto Ricans to the area. What was your experience helping evacuees? You know, for the ones, especially, you know, my family, I've had family members who came from Puerto Rico and have decided to stay. For them, it's been, it's been a, you know, do I leave or do I stay? I have a kid who is on the, in the autism, on the autism spectrum. Do I go back and know that he's not going to have his resources or do I stay here? At the same time, this, this relative is working. She's making things happen for her and for her kids. So it's been on a, the whole adaptation process. Um, they do, uh, in a lot of the families, or a few of the families that I've talked to, they do seem to compare, you know, um, I don't want to say apples to apples because it may be more apples to mangoes in that sense, um, in the sense of, you know, you cannot compare the healthcare system here and the treatment that he was getting, that he He's getting here to a treatment that he will be getting in Puerto Rico, um, but you know it's been it's been a whole process of you know learning where to go and how to go, and, and I think that that's where you really see resilience in happening. Happening, um, just people saying, you know what, I'm gonna stick through with it, and I'm gonna stay here and just go. Students' adaptation to new schools can be a challenge. Based on your experience, what can you tell us about the challenges that new students confronted? at school after Hurricane Maria. So not all of the schools are equipped with bilingual education. Um, we have three or four schools in the city of Hartford that are really, really focused on working with kids whose language, um, primary language is Spanish. Um, so they, that's where the um, schools uh, decided to send the kids who came from Puerto Rico and from the islands because it was not just Puerto Ricans coming in um, but any um, child who came in who didn't have the language they will go to those four, four schools as opposed to just a mainstream school any of the other neighborhood schools um, so that really made it easy for the kids to transition from you know Spanish speaking to then going into a bilingual class and then the following year to go into hopefully mainstream um, English classes 
At Puerto Rican Voices, we have also interviewed members of the Capital Region of Educational Counseling in Hartford, Connecticut. Let's watch this clip and we can discuss afterwards. So Capital Region Education Council, uh, fam affectionately known as CREC, um, we are one of six regional education service centers in Connecticut. We are the largest and we have 17 magnet schools and over 120 programs ranging from birth to three all the way to adult ed student and student services. Our mission is to provide equity, um, um, social justice, uh, and we demand equity for all, uh, for families and students. The staff, the management, and then we coordinated all the donations food, clothing, and money. We raised over $150,000 from November through March. Me uní a este viaje, ¿verdad? Porque eh, perdí todo. Me trasladó aquí a Hartford. Me hospedé en, en el Hotel Red Roof. Ahí eh, conocí a Aura Alvarado, conocí a Lili Vélez, eh, conocí a Carmen Coto, a Janet Hernández, entre otras personas, eh, los cuales los apodamos Los Ángeles, porque fueron um, personas que estuvieron eh, desde el día uno. Empecé eh, de voluntaria con Lili a cocinar para las familias que, que estaban en la misma situación que yo. Quiero seguir haciéndolo. We develop a col uh, collaborative relationship with Centro, the Center for Puerto Rican Studies, to conduct a survey financed by the Hartford Foundation for Public Giving. And the goal of the survey was to assess or create a needs assessment of the essential needs of displaced Puerto Ricans and their impact on local households in Connecticut and in the, or rather in the greater Hartford region. We interviewed upwards of 1,300 individuals in the area, uh, in the streets, through phone calls, through meetings, across the board. And the three general findings that we were able to identify were that many Puerto Ricans who were displaced were facing house, housing shortages. They didn't have anywhere to live. Um, they had food shortages. Even working families could not provide enough food for their families or the people that were staying with them. We estimate that the bulk of Puerto Ricans who came here uh, had already left by February. Now what we are seeing is that a lot of Puerto Ricans came and settled generally with Puerto Rican families throughout the state and through the corridor. In other words, from New York to Hartford, to Holyoke and Springfield, Massachusetts, to Boston. I founded Lely Sin Barreras because I wanted to do exactly that, remove barriers and bring the hope that we all can do that. So with 30 years of experience and after a brain injury, um, I had to find my way back. So when I founded Lely Sin Barreras, it was about helping people remove barriers in the social and legal system. And a colleague, Carmen Coto, called me and said, where can we get a warm meal for the families who are at the Red Roof Inn, uh, who don't have a fridge, who don't have a stove, and you know, that kind of stuff. And so I said, uh, well, cook. I'll cook a meal. I have a stove. And so I thought it would be maybe two or three days. Um, we ended up cooking for about six months. The end goal is we're going to we're going to make sure that the process, the due process, regulations that get put into place, and the practice of the same. It doesn't matter where you come from, maybe Puerto Rico, Haiti, Cuba. Um, we're going to treat you as we want it to be treated. Coming up next at Puerto Rican Voices. The fact that we have a center for Puerto Rican studies is something that you can't get anywhere else. I'd say it's probably the most important research resource for anyone learning about the diaspora. People who are passionate about our history and culture can go and learn more about who we are. Centro pinpoints and expresses what Puerto Ricans are all about, what their history is all about, their culture. As a journalist, it's very useful because it provides well-researched statistics of our communities throughout the United States. And the journal is unique in that it is the only journal that publishes research articles on the Puerto Rican experience. You can find old records, you can find old photographs, you can even find old puppets from the Pura del Pre archives. It holds our history and protects it. And without Centro, without the archives, without the library, all these materials would be in jeopardy.
Welcome back to Puerto Rican Voices. It is obvious that Puerto Rican organization helped families adapt to their new communities. What has been your experience helping these families? It's really nice to see now everybody is at the same level, everybody's at a different goal uh, post, if, if you can say that, um, where we have families who have really, you know, the parents are working, husband and wife are really making it happen for themselves and, this, and the kids. You see pictures on Facebook of the kids, you know, doing sports, doing well in school. So to me, it's like, okay, no, I didn't help all three million Puerto Ricans back home, but I know that through my efforts, I helped somebody, even if it, it was just that one family. And, and it's really nice to see at the end of the day. Anna, we thank you so much for being with us and for sharing your experience and knowledge with us. Thank you so much for having me. I hope everything goes well and many, many blessings to you and yours and hope to talk to you soon. Thanks. Thanks to you and thanks to our audience for being with us. We will see you next at Puerto Rican Voices.